Have you ever heard someone say, there's a gap in the research, and wondered what that really means? Today, I'm going to explain what a research gap is, why it matters, and the different types you should know about. Let's dive right in. First off, a research gap is simply something that hasn't been studied yet. It could be missing information, a question no one has answered, or a problem that hasn't been solved. Imagine reading lots of books about fitness, but none of them talk about how it affects teenagers specifically. That missing part is a research gap. Now, why is finding these gaps so important? Well, they help researchers avoid repeating old studies, and they point to new areas that need exploring. Filling these gaps can lead to new discoveries and solutions. All right, let's break down the different types of research gaps with simple examples. First, there's the knowledge gap. This happens when we just don't know enough about something. For example, we know exercise helps mental health, but we might not know exactly how long the benefits last. That missing piece is a knowledge gap. Next is the theoretical gap. This is when existing ideas or models don't fully explain a situation. Imagine two experts disagreeing on how stress affects memory. Since there's no clear answer, that disagreement is a theoretical gap. Then we have the methodological gap. This happens when studies rely on the same methods and ignore other ways of researching. For instance, if every study on climate change uses surveys but no one does real experiments, that's a methodological gap. Another type is the population gap. This means certain groups of people are left out. Think about workplace stress studies that only focus on managers. If no one studies how stress affects entry-level workers, that is a population gap. There's also the evidence gap. This happens when studies show different results. For example, one study might say a diet is good for heart health, while another says it's not. When results don't match up, that creates an evidence gap. Lastly, we have the empirical gap. This means there isn't enough real-world data to back up a theory. Let's say experts believe remote learning improves productivity, but no actual studies have tested it. The lack of real data makes this an empirical gap. So, how do you find research gaps? Here are some easy steps. 1. Read lots of articles and books. 2. Look for patterns or missing pieces. 3. Pay attention to areas with conflicting results. 4. Focus on groups or topics that aren't well covered. In next video, I will tell about how to find research gaps with help of ChatGPT and Google Scholar. And that's it. Research gaps help push knowledge forward and finding them can lead to exciting discoveries. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more research tips.